Let's switch gears now and talk about the COVID-19 restrictions. Confusion. What do you make of this, Gerard Because now there seems to be a lot of push and pull. Government says that all factors are still held constant, no public gatherings, no nothing. The court says different. And Kenyans online have been trending and the curfew all along. <laughs> Where I, I want to say from uh, that um, that was a land, landmark ruling appreciating the fact that of late the judiciary has been under fire and has, has been under uh, a lot of intimidation and blackmail. You remember two judges were arrested in their chambers a few months ago. So this ruling by Justice uh, Mrima is, it goes a very, it's, it shows the protection of the constitution that we must do. In as much as we appreciate that uh, COVID has become a serious uh, public health concern, uh, of course, it should be done in a way that uh, respects human rights. And uh, the, the reason uh, the, the Justice Murima uh, ruling yesterday, uh, declaring it null and void, and we of, course, of course we expect Friday also to hear null and void, is that um, it violated the Constitution. You know, this is a public order act, is uh, is an ordinary legislation. But when you go to our Constitution on fundamental human rights, right to worship, right to movement, right of uh, movement and, and, and all those who are being violated by the public order. You remember the creation of our constitution, uh, the National Security Council, NSAC, uh, Advisory Council, sorry, uh, has been advising the Inspector General of Police how to do their work. You remember under the constitution, Inspector General of Police should not receive any directives, even the DPP. So I think that is where the courts found that there was no proper procedure uh, on how the curfew was being implemented. So I just wanted to say that on the court. When you look at this enforcement of containment measures and curfews, the people who have made money are the police. Because <laughs> when it reaches time, when the curfew, and Kenyans have been complaining. In fact, uh, there is a matter I raised about a Moist Bridge roadblock somewhere between Transoia and, uh, and, and Wazingishu and, and Kamega. Allegedly, the police, uh, when you are got there under curfew, you must pay five uh, 2000 When they take you to a police station, the allegations that you pay around uh, 5000 before you are let out. We have seen even allegedly what we saw happen to Kianjogoma brothers, the Embu killings also might have been about the bribery when you went uh, when Lesos police station was being burned somewhere in uh, Nandi County it is because a, a police officer shot a, a motorbike operator who had who are not wearing a mask so if you look at how these curfew containments have been made the people who are benefited and they have benefited allegedly are the police officers where they are getting handouts you saw even a video that went viral I'm, I'm told the IG has ordered an investigation I think somewhere in Karen here that uh, police officers were picking uh, several high-end liquor and saying these are the samples and putting somewhere. I, I, everybody saw that. So from where I sit, I think the, the, the issue of uh, restrictions and curfew has been used unfairly, yeah. especially by officials of interior. And I think uh, every right Kenyans has, because by the way, nowadays you don't know whether to fear a robber or a, or a policeman because and another danger in this country being being a young be a, a young person and i saw somebody commented somewhere the the, the quickest day to die, the quickest way to die in kenya is being a young person because most of these people are suffering because of curfew are young people because they are going to hustle yeah. they are going to look for their daily jobs they get late Do you know these are people who use matatus they they come and they can come here in nairobi and across the country they go and hustle somewhere industrial area yeah. they don't have money they live maybe as late as eight they try to walk through langata road all the way to Mbagate, going maybe back to kibra and many other areas uh, they live in so at the end of the day I can tell you the biggest beneficiaries of this curfew and containment measures has been government officers who are trying and secondly and finally I have said here before that we must uh, as a country the only way to safely reopen the economy is ensuring that we vaccinate for 7.5 million Kenyans. Trevor, you have to note, it is sad, and I think it was even covered by, uh, by one of your reporters yesterday evening, that all the vaccines that we have received, 2.7 mil million doses that have been brought to the country, as all of them are being donations, can you believe 2.3% of Kenyans or more are only being vaccinated out of 47.5 million Kenyans? And yet the government has assured us that 
that by, by this month we should have 10 million Johnson & Johnson doses. Say that by December this year we should be vaccinated 10 million Kenyans. They told us before elections next year at least 27 million Kenyans would have been vaccinated. If we cannot move fast enough yeah. to ensure that we vaccinate our people, then it will be very hard to reopen the economy. But my opinion, and I've said before, yeah. and the president should not use curfew and restrictions. Because the way, by the way, some, so from where I sit, these containment measures has been used to, fight, to punish uh, for political convenience. Okay. Because any time the, 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 the deputy president moves around and does a, a bit of meetings, they say now we need to ban the containment. And, uh, but you, you remember even in Oma Bay today, which we'll cover later, People are congregating in terms of thousands and hundreds. Yeah. But when other individuals, do, and, and I want to say that the biggest problem that we are facing in the country, as I conclude, is the way we ban these meetings. Mm. You find that some individuals are being allowed to do their meetings. When Alfred wants to do his meeting, they, they are not allowed. Others are being allowed, like what is happening in Homer Bay. We are told on Friday there is Kakamega. So you wonder when these containment measures and restrictions and curfew, when they are being, are they being targeted for political convenience or what? Okay. But going into the future, I agree with Kenyans, there are many car wash boys, there are many waiters, and many uh, 24 hour economy has really died because mm -hmm. most Kenyans used to depend on 24 hour economy to make their All living. All right. Governor, you're dealing with this fast and In fact, yes. Machakos is yes. one of the places where the positivity rate is almost at 30%, if mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. But you see, uh, you know, this issue of COVID, yeah. this issue of COVID is very serious, and uh, we need to take it seriously. Um, and I totally agree with my brother here, uh, Senator Chirangai, about self-discipline and the things we do, you know, large numbers and, and all those things. Now, what the court ruled, the court did not say that uh, banning public meetings is wrong. What the court said is that the the way the directives are given to the police to enforce is not proper. So the court did not say that ban, that now people can now have public meetings, we can go back to normal. No, no, no. The court ruled that, according to my interpretation, that the process of giving you know, uh, powers to the police to do this, this is erroneous. Yeah. So that can be corrected and question a few things. Uh, the curfew has hurt a lot of businesses. I mean, the hotel industry, I mean, the entertainment industry, we are hurting because we had to lay people off because now you have to close early uh, restrictive measures in terms of people coming for conferences. Uh, and so as a result, there is lack of money in circulation, yeah. in circulation, which is a very big problem. But do we lift the curfew? Do we want to go the Indian way? What can we do? What is the balancing act? You know, does it mean that we need a sense of, uh, of, of discipline? And let me, let me give you the solutions that we have. No, the first thing is that we really need to vaccinate our people. In Machakos, we got 7,000 more vaccinations yesterday, adding to all we are vaccinating across the villages. My, my drugs, when they come, we distribute them all over to the villages. So as they, the people in danger, people are being vaccinated. And people are lining up to be vaccinated. Because right now, as we speak, there is not a single place, not a single administrative location in Machakos County where somebody has not died from COVID. Everybody now knows somebody who has died from COVID. Young people to old people. Mm. People who are supposedly strong who are dying from COVID. So people are taking it very, very seriously. And so now we are vaccinating, people are lining up. We need to put our efforts and our money right now in getting more vaccines. One year the president has met these organizations and this is the money they are putting forth and these are vaccines that are coming out of the meeting held in Status Mombasa, yeah. not about Okoa, Okas, Yuninini. That's what people want because we want to sustain life, yeah. which is very, very important. The second thing is that also we have to recognize that uh, as a people, we have to know that we have to take our, our care of ourselves as individuals. You can't just go rogue. You have to take care of yourself. And so, let me give you for example. Uh, in Australia, in uh, the capital city of Canberra, they, they have 83 cases, out of which 50% are kids. Because of those 83 cases between the, you know, the 4th of July, uh, 4th of August and today, within two weeks, eh, they have shut down the, the whole uh, basically state. It's shut down. 83 cases. We're talking about thousands. When we say 83 cases, shut down. But the thing about shutting down there is that even the police themselves, the police officers go on lockdown. Askari Munyo are talking Nyumbani, 
si serikali imesema tukae nyumbani askari anakaa nyumbani why because nobody dares come out when there's a lockdown because people are obedient watu wanaamua this is the proper thing we need to do but then that brings us to the question of economics uh, senator uh, trevor you know how it is unaambiwa kae nyumbani utakula nini by seeing those countries they cushion you know every household is being given what they'll get maybe uh, $10,000 eventually that's what they do you know you, uh, the house is given $1,000 a month they are being cushioned so you know unapewa shilingi 100 ukae nyumbani kalakimbili when the shopping so things are taken care of the structures are moving water is flowing things are moving so it's easier for you to actually stay at home yeah. so it's a balance of these things okay. so the question we need to ask even as covid is hitting us and as our politicians go to home and other things are we responsible enough to ensure that we are not creating agencies or areas where we are infecting thousands of people mm. there are clear guidelines that have been given internationally yeah. from uh, israel to saudi arabia from australia to brazil from the United States to South Africa we know conglomerate with a few people if possible outside 50 to 100 people that has been the accepted standard in the world but not thousands of people if people are going to a concert you've seen in the US they have to show double vaccination uh, certificates to be allowed in so are we adhering to some of those standards ama si tunajiachilia tu kusabu ni wakati wa siasa na wakati wa kukutana na watu na kuendelea mbele all right. Let's bring up your feedback before we talk about the drought appeal that's happening. Twelve counties are on the verge of drought as we speak right now. As we speak, the country needs 9.4 billion shillings. We have just about 2 billion shillings coming through. Amaganga Mustaf says cabinet reshuffling at this point of time is suspect. Perhaps a scheme of chasing route away indirectly. Mutava Jaffet says, I wish the president would keep off from succession politics and look forward to strengthen the systems which will ensure that the country is stable after elections. That is what successful succession is all about. Jacob Abere says, coalitions are the way forward. Whoever is contrary, he or she is in a state of illusion. All right, Dennis says, the fact that President Kenyatta started locking DP Ruto out of BBI initi initiation meetings is when everything started getting going to the winds. I believe that's what you wanted to say. Aula Willis says, Ernest Ben once said, politics is the art of looking for trouble, finding it whether it exists or not, diagnosing it incorrectly and applying the wrong remedy. <laughs> this is what <laughs> politicians are doing now. Citizens must be on the watch out. Kiprono Abraham says, is Uru legacy pegged on who succeeds him? I think his legacy should be purely on development projects done by his government and peaceful transition after his term, not who will take over from him. Okay. Ingen Lazaro says hardliners who are aiming to ride on their particular tribal chiefs tag to gubernatorial and other elective positions are pushing some presidential hope political oblivion. They're only championing their personal interests. Okay.